This is your CBS News Baltimore afternoon update for Thursday, May 16th. I'm Denise Koch. We are learning some new details about the key bridge collapse after the National Transportation Safety Board and other federal officials testified before Congress on federal response and rebuilding. During that hearing, the head of NTSB, Jennifer Hamandi, said some of her biggest questions are now focused on the ship's electrical system. This comes just one day after the NTSB released a preliminary report. Among its findings, the ship had a pair of catastrophic electrical failures just minutes before the crash and had experienced two blackouts the day prior while it was in port. The NTSB's report does not say who eventually will be liable for the Dolly losing power. Well, primary election day is over, but the results are not official in some races. Today, election workers will begin counting thousands of mail-in ballots. Now, this is critical because three Baltimore City Council races are simply too close to call. The closest in District 11, representing neighborhoods such as Mount Vernon, Federal Hill and Upton. Incumbent Eric Costello clinging to a slim 25-vote lead over newcomer Zach Blanchard. Costello is leading in May in votes. For District 8, the representative of West Baltimore needs to be determined. Paris Gray leading by 53 votes. However, mail-in votes are tending in favor of opponent Bilal Ali so far. District 12, also one to look out for after redistricting, added the Harbor East neighborhood to this zone. Jermaine Jones holds the lead over Councilman Robert Stokes by 140 votes. Well, hundreds gathered at Pimlico for a Preakness Week tradition. It is the annual alibi breakfast. The Woodlawn vase is on display as owners, trainers, jockeys and guests gather to talk about the big race. The event jokingly gives everyone a chance to come up with an alibi in case their horse doesn't win. And this tradition dates back to the 1930s. And that's your afternoon update for CBS News Baltimore. I'm Denise Koch.